Hey, it's Dry Bear. Another month is upon us. We are now into May. And as we did with the last two months, April and March, I will be doing a class popularity for a Lost Ark video. This is something I used to do a lot as a game developer, tracking class usage and character usage, but it's also something that's very interesting to me and I hope interesting to you as well. So today we figure out what classes are the most popular in Lost Ark for May. So let's go. But first, if you have any questions or comments for me, you'll find me live every day on twitch.tv forward slash drybear. Who knows? I might even be streaming right now. Now this month, I felt like changing up the methodology a little bit. So let's talk about what I changed and why. But first, if you're looking for the last two months of popularity, April and March, you'll find those linked on screen and down below in the description. One of the major issues, if not the most major issue with the previous class popularity videos was with the overabundance of bots in the game. Now, because Western Locks Ark does not have a public API, it is impossible for me as a general user to just go in and and get accurate popularity stats for the game, which means left to my own devices, I have to be a little sneaky beaky and try to glean this information based on what I do have access to. And what I had been doing for the last two months was using the character creation stats in the client to suss out what people are creating, what classes they're using, and then weight those against each other for an overall percentage to see which classes are being created the most. Obviously, this includes every character created, which has a lot of flaws with it. The biggest being that it includes every bot ever created. So if in the previous videos, you'll see that there's a large skew towards Sorceress and Berserker, partially because they're the first ones on the list, but also because they level very quickly, have a lot of AOE, or intend to be very strong without needing a lot of gear. So today, I'm going to take a different tact on this to see how it compares to the previous and see if we can get closer to a normalized scale that includes active players that are currently playing Lost Ark. And to do that, I went through the auction house on my region and went through all the transactions that are going on for each class, as well as their item registrations and posts. Now, luckily in Western Lost Ark, we have guaranteed class engravings for our end game content. So for Abyssal Dungeons, Abyss Raids, you're getting guaranteed at least one of your class engravings. And this is useful because it means that I can look at the auction house and see which of the accessories and items that are being posted have class engravings on them, which means that someone of that class looted it from an, uh, an end game PVE content that would drop it. And then looked at the activity of registrations on the auction house and compared that to the sale rate. Now, obviously this is not a perfect system either, but neither was the last methodology as there could be more or less people holding on to their items or not posting in the auction house. And this would have minor skews on the overall data. But for this month, I figured it'd be a, a much more accurate, hopefully measurement of active player base, not bots that are, are not actively doing game content. Now, just to make sure we're not getting weird numbers, I tried to wait the registrations to the number of purchases just to make sure we're not getting um you know classes that are underutilized having a hard high number of item registrations but not a lot of purchases because people aren't actually uh, playing those classes and looking for items so let's get into what i found now the major drawback with this is i cannot look at the auction house for a region unless i have a character that's level 30 or above so for today's video, just to test out the methodology, we will be looking at stats only from the US East region. As for the other regions, I do not have characters that are level 30 or above that are able to access the auction house and pull that data. So let's look at what I found. On screen, you will see an auction house representation of which classes are the most active with items traded and items registered. This is looking at only tier three, so excluding the previous two tiers. So for this class popularity, this is looking at only tier three classes based on how often they complete content and then post that the rewards from that content onto the auction house and then trade and have transactions. Coming in at number one is Sorceress. And I, you know, it's it, it's interesting that when we started pulling out character, ter, character creation, Berserker did drop down in the list a little bit. It is still in the top three, but it's not so skewed as it was before. Sorceress is actually a standard deviation or two away from the herd. So she is from, if we use this as an accurate measurement, you would say that Sorceress is 
far and away the most popular class in the game. So among the people that play the game actively in tier three, Sorceress takes the cake. In second place is Deathblade. And this one isn't too surprising either. I think if you look back on your experiences in tier three, grouping with others, seeing a lot of Sorceresses and Deathblades doesn't really sound all that surprising. In third place is Berserker. Uh, a little bit lower than the top two, but still in the top three. And again, this shouldn't be too surprising. Berserkers are a very popular class. But we get down to number four is when it gets interesting because number four is Glavier, the brand new class that just got introduced to the game only a few weeks ago. And since this snapshot is using only tier three as a measurement, it's pretty impressive to see Glavier rising up to the number four most played class in the game even so shortly after her release there's a lot of reasons for this i think people generally have an affinity towards pole arms staves spears halberds as a general weapon set but also she has a very wide kit that can be played in many different ways she is the only dps besides gun lancer that has a parry ability she has some of the longest range of all the martial artists and generally has a cool vibe now, number five is Paladin, and this is exciting to see. I think we definitely need more supports in the game, and I'm personally excited for the release of Artist in the West because having more supports only benefits everybody. And I can definitely see this being the case as Paladin is an archetype that has existed in Western RPGs and MMOs for a very long time and is always very popular. Coming in at number six is Gunslinger. I think a class that is kind of fought for the the top upper echelon of popularity ever since the game launched. She's unique in her playstyle, and I think that aesthetic is something that attracts a large audience among people that play MMOs. Number seven at 6.7% is a little bit surprising to me. This is Shadowhunter. Now, Shadowhunter and Deathblade have always fought for the top five or so. They are, they're both very popular. But it's interesting to me that as you get later and later into the game, you move towards tier three and you're like talking about completing content, Shadowhunter has fallen pretty significantly from previous measurements in popularity. Maybe this has to do with Shadowhunter players who have fallen off from the game, or maybe people are focusing on alts they like more, or maybe they find that they just don't like the Shadowhunter as much as they did as they pushed towards the late game. Number eight is Gun Lancer at a 6.35% of the auction house measurement and this one is exciting because i think the gun lancer ended up as characters created goes uh ended up dropping down a good bit in most of the measurements but when you use this kind of methodology gun lancer has risen up just barely above the midline now i never expected gun lancer to be in the top three he's not going to ever be the most popular class in the game as his movement is unique his play style is unique and he tends to be a little slow which not everyone is going to jive with. But I think the people that are attuned with that kind of playstyle are are absolutely falling in love with Gunlancer. He's also one of the best non-support classes to have in your group as he does have a cleanse, something that even a bard doesn't have in her kit. And as we get later and later into the content of the game and builds get stronger, more stats become available and you can have more engravings active, people will start to see just how powerful Gunlancer can be and how much ridiculous damage it can deal coming in number nine is the bard at 5.92 percent this one actually when you look at tier three completion bard did fall down a little bit it was a little bit higher prior and this one i'm not exactly sure as to why bard being the other support in the game besides the paladin uh, i think when you compare them the paladin is a little bit easier to pick up as far as skill floor goes uh, as the bard it has to think about things differently than the paladin does uh, the biggest one obviously is choosing between healing or dealing damage with your or increasing damage um, done by your party with your identity plus having longer cast animations and things like that but i hope this continues to rise over time because i think bards are very vital to the gameplay as you get further and when we start getting legion raids with Vaulton coming soon uh we're definitely gonna need a lot more bards in the game so i hope this starts to climb up as people get more gear and get more comfortable with the game number 10 is the striker at 3.83%, you actually see a pretty large drop off here. You're going from 6% to under 4% uh, in the total population or, or transactions completed. And I'm not surprised to see this being one of the most popular martial artists, especially on US East, as I think US East has always favored the striker, but you can see 
just how much the Glavier has overtaken the people that tend to like martial artists by its positioning here. Just under the striker is the War Dancer at 3.71%. And although the War Dancer was among the least most created, or I guess just the least created class in the game previously, as you get further into the game, into late game, uh, War Dancer tends to be a little bit more popular. It comes off the bottom three as we've seen it there before. And as I've noted in other videos, the War Dancer is high, more favored in US East than in any other region. So this is probably the highest it's gonna be, but it is interesting to see it overtake some of the things or classes that are underneath her. Number 12 is the Artillerist at 3.42%. And I honestly feel like this is where the Artillerist is gonna sit. In almost every popularity measurement I've done, Artillerist kind of sits around here. He's in the bottom five, bottom six. He's not the least popular, but he's towards the bottom. And probably for similar reasons like the Gun Lancer, he tends to be a little bit slower. He has some, he's a ranged class, so he has a little bit more locked animations, including his identity, where he turns into turret. Though, granted, some firepower builds greatly reduce the amount of time you spend in turret uh, to a small amount, but this is where he sits nonetheless. Coming in at 13 is the Scrapper. And in previous measurements, we saw the Scrapper actually being the lowest in the game in almost all checks so it is interesting to see when you look at a uh, hot you know tier three completion for classes scrapper comes out of the bottom slot and actually moves up to the fourth from the bottom speeding out to the classes that are below her which always felt like it was a little bit off because you do see scrappers pretty regularly and the next three classes do seem to appear very rarely, if at all, in the groups that you're going through. Number 14 is the Sharpshooter at three at 2.89%. We're going to see another statistical drop off here as we get closer and closer to 2% um, at the baseline. But Sharpshooter being the third least popular. And this one always baffles me. Uh, the Sharpshooter, for you know, it's a great class. Incredible damage, very reliable, easy to build, two distinct builds you can play with. Uh, it just saw some buffs in Korea that will hopefully we'll get uh, maybe with the Vaulton update or at least, you know, in the next few months, we'll see. I'm very excited to see those changes on my sharpshooter, but I'm not sure why the sharpshooter just doesn't get love. Maybe he's just a little bit too basic or simple, or maybe the, the, the bow class has been done so much before people want some of the more unique classes in the game. Or maybe when you look at the sheer wow factor that the class design uh, of the other classes is in Lost Ark. Sharpshooter just doesn't have as much wow, but amazing class, very strong, just not that popular. Another statistical drop off here for the second to last spot is the Soul Fist at 2.15%. And this is kind of what I figured was going to happen. If you go back to some of the popularity, uh, especially on launch and then going forward the first month or two, uh, especially for Western Lost Ark, the Soul Fist was hype. Uh, a lot of people very excited to play in the class. Maybe it's just people growing up with uh, anime and cartoons that really like the idea of Soul Fist that want to try her out. But I think that she does have some inherent design flaws that turn the mass population off and make her a little bit more of a niche pick. Now, if you're a Soul Fist main, don't feel like you are, uh, you should swap mains at all. Soul Fist is very strong. And some of the uh, theory crafting and the testing that we're seeing in Korea right now with the latest patch and changes show Soul Fist getting exceptionally stronger and more reliable. Uh, and of course, as we get higher in gear, when we get relic accessories and gear and we go into ancient, Soul Fist is gonna keep getting better. So she's an excellent class. I think it's just the way that she plays, the builds that she has, the restrictions, and the requirements that she has in how she plays is just never going to be a high popularity, mass appeal kind of game design. And dead last, the very bottom, the lowest popularity in the game, probably comes as no surprise to anyone, is the Dead Eye. One of the male gunner classes, it is the male counterpart of the Gunslinger, uh, and it just you know, if you get to tier three and you're looking at completion, Deadeye is dead last. And I've talked about this many times before, but just to reiterate, I think this is mainly because he's just, uh, in a lot of ways, a much more difficult version of Gunslinger um, that has a lot more requirements. He, if anyone wants the short answer of the difference between Gunslinger gun and Deadeye, Gunslinger uses rifle and has a lot of, you know, plays like a ranged class with locked animations and big burst. 
whereas Deadeye plays more like a melee because he favors his uh, shotgun and generally people will go with a back attack style play style but you don't really have the speed and the quickness of a martial artist that has to get behind the boss uh, and you are very squishy so if you get caught out you can die and you actually get a lot of benefit for being point blank range with a shotgun which on some encounters where they're moving a lot, it can be very painful. Now, we did see some changes, but not really, I think, any of the changes people were looking for in Korea. And again, if you're a Deadeye main, this doesn't mean that your class is bad or you should switch or anything. It just means that uh, it's something that people aren't actively using to complete content in Tier 3 on US East. And that does it for the May popularity video. Let me know what you think about these numbers. Uh, relative to character creation that we did the last two months. Um, if this is something that you prefer, uh, it, you, you know, you like seeing uh, activity on the auction house in the end game, the final tier, tier three versus character creation. Let me know. We can do that for next month. And a fun thing that I found out as well, um, ignoring registrations and kind of flux in the auction house, just looking at pure sales, items that actually get sold, uh, you know, transactions that get completed on the auction house, uh, here is a list of the classes that sell the best um, and have the, you know, in, in a, a loose way would represent the classes that have items that sell and, and potentially give you the most profit. And those classes in order are Glavier, then Berserker, then Sorceress, then Bard, then Shadow Hunter, then Paladin, then Deathblade. So these classes have the highest activity of actually completed transactions on the auction house and generally have a high markup because of it but that's what i got thanks for tuning in if you enjoyed yourself today leave a like down below you can support me and my work on patreon and view patreon exclusive content link in the description thank you so much for tuning in and i'll see you in the next one